Good afternoon, everybody. It is again Thursday afternoon, Wednesday afternoon. I have to start over. It's again the afternoon 3.30 call, and we are here to share with you an update of what's happening in Eau Claire. First of all, I want to start by saying thank you to all of our community members. It's been a, a rough stretch. We had new orders yesterday that have enormous implications for our community. We are needing to work together, and I really want to thank our community for doing that. We know that it's hard, and we know that it's going to take each one of us stepping up and stepping in to help one another. So if we do that, we'll get through it together, and I know that our community is doing that. Thank you for joining the daily media briefing. We appreciate what media is doing to inform our community. You are a critical partner with us in making sure messages get out. We also want to remind media that as you do stories on this event, that it's critically important that we keep the privacy of individuals that are being tested and individuals that um, are, we are working with related to an exposure or a case of COVID-19 when we have that to keep their privacy intact. So we are really asking the media to help with us, help work with us on that. Again, we know that our schools and businesses are enormously impacted in this community. Um, they're operating either in, at closure status now or at limited capacity, and we know that's creating a lot of strain. Um, for some, that may be really a critically important time to check in with people because of their stress level. Make sure they know that while Life is not normal right now. It will return to normal, we hope and um, expect soon. And um, until then, we need to support each other. Again, there are no confirmed positive cases of COVID-19 in Eau Claire County as of this afternoon. We continue to have tests being done um, and all of the test results that have come back to date have been negative. In the state, we know as of today that there are 106 positive cases of COVID-19 in Wisconsin. There have been almost 1,600 tests to date that have come back negative. As of today, there are three new counties with positive COVID-19 cases, and that does include La Crosse County, the nearest county to us, with a positive case. Last night, the city of Eau Claire, Eau Claire County, and today the city of Altoona did do um, declarations of emergency. Those declarations or proclamations of emergency do provide some additional flexibility and resources for those governmental agencies to do the critical work that they need to do. It also uh, supports bringing down federal and state dollars into our community for response. This is really a collaborative effort, and we um, are really all counting on government, our government um, officials working with us in this time, and the declarations of emergency help support that work. Yesterday, I think as everybody is aware, there was a order from the governor's office to close businesses um, in large measure with some exemptions in that order. That order did include many businesses that are impacting that are impacted in this community. Mass gatherings of people over 10 is really the, the focus and the priority of that order to create a condition where we are not spreading disease when disease occurs in this community. We know we have disease across Wisconsin. This is a Wisconsin order, and it's really attempt an attempt to make sure that people are not congregating in ways that will spread disease. We are trying across the state to slow down that curve. So again, flatten the curve so that our healthcare systems are not overwhelmed. While we don't have cases in Eau Claire County right now, the order is statewide and it's critically important that we are abiding by that order. Again, we will be following up as we hear about places that are not doing that, and we are definitely following up with all our establishments as they have questions about abiding by that order. We expect that people will be doing the right thing across our state to make sure that individuals are safe. 
There are except exceptions to the order, and certainly when people have questions about that, we'd like to speak with them. We don't want everything to close if there are ways to keep people safe and healthy with social distancing and control measures that are appropriate. We understand all of this is challenging, and we understand that community spread is a difficult concept. Again, a reminder that what community spread means is that there is disease in the community that is spreading from person to person, that it is not known always where somebody that is COVID positive, COVID-19 positive got the disease from. We know that there is community spread happening in a number of counties across our state and is certainly happening in other states and countries. And that is where we're paying attention because that's where we need to flatten that curve. Two additional updates that we wanted to share with you um, for today. Um, one that is critically important for our community members and um, we know has an enormous impact is that the governor within the last couple of hours has restricted the size of childcare settings. So centers, childcare centers, licensed centers may have only 10 staff present at a time and may not operate with any more than 50 children present at a time. That is a new order that just came out. We are working with making sure that we are communicating that broadly to individuals, families, and child care centers. We do have in our incident command structure a group that is specifically working on this topic. And as we found out about this an hour ago, um, they are starting to work on figuring out ways that we can support particularly those families of responders, healthcare workers, public health workers, and other emergency responders and families that have very limited options for childcare because of financial barriers. Yesterday, we shared some additional information with all of you about resources that are available. Again, the childcarereferral.org site or 1-800-782-1888. is a resource that is currently available for people to contact. Again, we are working on this topic right now as one of our priorities because we know it has incredible impact on, on all of us in this community. We also have an update related to testing. There's been a lot of confusion about testing and so we will continue, I think, to talk about this. Um, our main goal with testing is to protect um, the people in this community where community spread happens, but also to protect the valuable resource we have in healthcare. So again, people with mild illness or people with no symptoms but are concerned about having been exposed, testing is not recommended. Again, mild illness or, or simply concern about exposure, testing is not recommended for this, this group. It's recommended that those people that potentially have been exposed or have illness stay home and um, stay home until their symptoms are gone if they have some level of sickness and if they are exposed or have traveled to an area of exposure that they self-quarantine for 14 days. Again, if they have symptoms, they should be calling their health care provider and problem solving with them about that. For testing, again, testing is taking a sample from an individual, a nasopharyngeal sample, down the nose, back of the throat, um, taking that swab. Um, the criteria has, is the same as it's always been, based on symptoms, again, and based on travel history. The State Lab of Hygiene and the Milwaukee Lab, our two public labs, yesterday did announce, and again a new announcement, that they are prioritizing the running of those samples at those two labs based on whether or not someone's hospitalized or is a healthcare worker. So again, they are, they are still receiving samples from people that have significant illness, but they are prioritizing running the sample at, that two, at those two public laboratories based on those two criteria. 
we do have other private labs that are running samples, and that does include Mayo Clinic Health System in Rochester as one example. They are running samples, and they again are using the prioritized, the, the criteria for testing, but they do not have the same restrictions on prioritization that the state lab um, and the, the lab in Milwaukee have. They are not required to follow those same guidelines. Additionally, you heard um, today that Mayo Clinic Health System in Eau Claire opened a drive-through screening process for current Mayo Clinic patients who meet the criteria for COVID-19 testing and are referred for testing. Jason Craig is here today to answer questions when we finish with the general comments and we are um, certainly willing to um, entertain questions about that. We know that other local healthcare providers in Eau Claire are looking also at this kind of option for testing. Um, and we know statewide and nationally this is a priority and as a best practice for testing. Testing continues to be an enormous concern in all communities, including Eau Claire, and we expect that we will continue to have updates related to that. Again, we know things are changing rapidly. Um, daily, we've brought updates to the community via this uh, media um, event, and we expect that that likely is going to continue. Um, we understand that's challenging, and we are trying to get information to the community as quickly as we have it so that people can start operationalizing that within their families or in their businesses and in the work that they do. Again, those 3.30 meeting, the briefings will continue. Do know that one of our priorities at this point is also paying attention to vulnerable populations in a very specific way. It has been all along, but we know that there are, with the things that have been happening um, across the community and across the state, are vulnerable populations that um, experience homelessness, those people that have very low incomes or have jobs that are um, creating challenges when those places of employment are closed are at extra risk right now and they have extra challenges with dealing with this kind of a situation. All of us do, but there are some that are definitely in positions where this is much harder for them to manage. Um, our incident command team is paying attention to that. We're also working on making sure materials are available in other languages so that people in our community where English is not their first language also have access to the updates that we're providing to the broad community through this format. So again, we know this is, um, this is a challenging time. We are taking that seriously and we are understanding that it's hard on the community and that um, we want to hear from you and we want you to support each other. So now we are available for questions. So in terms of testing, is it your goal to eventually get to a point where you can test not just these people with either high risk or have symptoms, and I guess, at what point do you think that that would be an option? Obviously, there are some, some roadblocks at this point. Sure. So the question is related to kind of what is our goal with testing. Uh, in a, from a public health sense, once we know that there's community spread of COVID-19, our goal is really to support those people that are hospitalized to make sure that we know what they have is COVID-19 and that we are treating them appropriately. We don't need to do broad testing to figure out at that point, is it here? Um, we would be undertaking all of those same measures that very frankly are currently happening, the closure of businesses, the closure of school to distance people. Um, once we um, get to the point where we have a vaccine available, which is rapidly being worked on, but will not happen for a while. Certainly then we'll have a better ability to um, make sure people are prevented from getting the illness and then testing will go into a whole new phase. So at this point, our priority, not only because of resources, but because it um, doesn't necessarily help us with how we respond to the average person that is sick, um, there's, there's not an, a huge need to test everybody. If you are ill, stay home. If you are ill and have been in contact or in a community where there was COVID-19, 
please stay home for 14 days. Um, and if you were in a place where you were likely a contact with someone with COVID-19, we are still recommending self-quarantine. So all of those measures are still in place. None of those re really require additional testing. I don't have that number today. Again, like we said yesterday, it is more than 50 tests. We are, um, the system that we have that's tracking testing is, um, we know tests are going in, but it's a little bit more difficult because we have to hand pull the numbers. We know it's well over 50 um, tests that have been completed and we know all of our healthcare institutions are doing tests actively following the criteria that are out there. And just to follow up with that, um, so if you don't know how many tests have been administered, but do you know how many results have come back? We do know how many results have come back. We do have negative results at this point for more than 20 individuals. Um, and we are, we are capable of getting the count of all the tests that have been administered, but we're prioritizing right now doing the public health follow-up on those that are negative and those that we need to either isolate because they're sick or we need to communicate to related to self-quarantine because they are at risk. Does the positive cases of lacrosse change anything being the closest kind of to a clear and it's you know, kind of seeming like it's starting to make its way over to the western side of the state now? Mm -hmm. Anything different after you guys learn about the sure. So the question is related to are we doing anything different because of there, we now have a lacrosse positive. We are not doing anything different. We have the same measures in place that we've always had. We have known that we will get cases um, across the state and it just happens that the, the positive that's a little bit closer is now in lacrosse. So um, we, are, we are continuing to prepare for the first positive case that comes in and respond to all of the other things we're doing right now to control disease spread. I think I'll ask uh, uh, Jason Craig to come forward as well in case there are any questions also that he can answer and um, please let us know if there are additional questions. Does anybody have any questions right now related to Mayo's um, testing or operations? Yes. Uh, Uh, thank you for that question. The answer is no. Uh, we are not collecting any form of payment at that testing site uh, and have no plans to do so either. How many tests are you capable of giving out at a, you know, a certain day? Of sure. Uh, an excellent question, and in fact, one that uh, we assess on virtually a daily basis, depending upon the changes in criteria. There's a lot of variables that go into uh, the criteria for testing. As Liska had uh, described, there's really a, a two-step process here. There's a preliminary screening that occurs, and then uh, pending a positive screening, that would lead to the actual testing, which involves those swabs. So as that criteria can potentially change on a daily basis, that has an impact on our uh, total projected capacity on a day-to-day -day basis. What kind of training has gone into you know, letting your workers know the difference between common cold versus something that's more of a red flag? Like, how much training has gone into it given that this is kind of a rapidly Sure. Uh, and that's where a lot of the publicly available resources come in handy. So the Centers for Disease Control put forward information in identifying symptoms and screening criteria very, very quickly. We, of course, work in concert with our colleagues at the Public Health Department uh, to assist and provide that training. Uh, training for our staff is an ongoing uh, experience for them. And um, certainly in this circumstance, we were able to work collaboratively with our colleagues and provide training uh, in, a, uh, in a very timely manner. Great. And I would just echo um, Jason's comments about, uh, you know, the guidance that we have is coming from a federal level to the state 
and we are also developing local guidance and really following best practice and the science around what are the signs and symptoms, who needs to be tested, and that, that's an important part of what we do here. Any additional questions? Mm -hmm. um, obviously, Eau Claire County, Augusta area, they have very heavily Amish mm -hmm. community who don't necessarily get mainstream you know, yeah. means of communication. How are they being contacted? How are they being tested, given that their means of travel is not obviously different than, um, than others? Yeah, so we um, do, we are well aware that the Plain community has a substantial population in Eau Claire County as well as a number of our other counties. We are working with all of those counties to really address the specific needs of that community. We do also, we are very fortunate in this community to have a specific public health nurse um, who really has an amazing relationship with our Amish and Plain community in, and has is recognized. Nurse Tammy is known, her car is known, and she is communicating regularly with that community. Um, it is a group that, again, has some specific um, communication needs that are maybe different than the rest of our population. So we are absolutely paying attention to that. Um, Clark County, our neighboring county, has similar needs and issues and is working with us on that as well. Mark, yes. Uh, just asking, if you respond, I've heard some uh, take exception to kind of the statewide, the broad brush of uh, uh, everybody across all 72 counties uh, capped out at 10. With somebody like mm -hmm. Eau Claire County, there's been no cases, and others, several who've had multiple. So can you address mm -hmm. those folks who feel, uh, take umbrage with the idea that uh, we paint with such a broad brush? Yeah. So the question is really, um, what about painting with a broad brush all of Wisconsin and the measures that are being taken in all of Wisconsin versus doing this community by community? Um, I think similarly, we could say, what about all of the U.S. versus just Wisconsin versus just Eau Claire County? It's a really challenging um, public health approach to try and figure out the best place to use the, the right place to use the right tool. Certainly without having um, identified community spread in Eau Claire, we might have not used the tools that are being used at a state level right now. But this is an unprecedented disease. It's not that there's just a single disease that's only hitting Eau Claire County. If we knew it was just something here, we might not have used these same very strong tools for just this area. This disease will be in all of our state. It is appropriate to use measures at this point now that we know that there's community spread happening. Um, we don't have walls around our community just like every other community and spread will happen. Um, and these measures are in place, they're being put in place at the state level to assure the, the least disease happening at the same time. So if we can ratchet that curve down a little bit, we'll have resources available, hopefully across the state, um, to help support people that may need them. It may mean that um, if resources are overwhelmed in other parts of the state, that we may need to support them even. Um, right now, we have capacity in our state to meet needs, but it is appropriate to have a statewide response at this point in, in the pandemic. So again, thank you, everybody. We know that this is a changing situation. We appreciate people staying on top of it so they know what they should be doing individually um, and as a community member. And we really appreciate people working together. So thank you.